I mean, I want to just tell you, uh, this is pretty awesome for me. Good to have you back. Yeah, man. Good to have you back. Got your new boat and everything. Fuzzy Davis. Hey. Thank you for being here. Hey, Captain John. Great to be with you. Great to be with Captain Thomas. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is this is fun. We have a lot of fun on the water. <laughs> I mean, we tell a lot of stories on the water. But we're going to have a lot of fun in here. We're going to tell a few stories in here, too. So I'm, we're going to have fun. We're going to have some fun. And, uh, man, I've, I've been on the island for a little while myself. And your name has come up many, many times. And I'll, we'll talk about you as a person. I think the biggest thing for me is not only what you've done with this industry on the island, as far as young captains, old mm -hmm. captains, whoever it is, and customers, and what you've brought people to. I think it's your personality that just stands out. And, and that's what I appreciate more about you. And I wanted to sit down with you. We got the young gun over here oh, we yeah. had the interview with. And now kind of the starting yeah. of the guard was the yeah. story started with you. So let's just start from the beginning. Childhood. What got you into fishing? What was your background? Where did you come from? Well, it's interesting. And I think everybody that gets into fishing that really develops a love for fishing has that gene. And, you know, because I had two brothers that don't fish, you know, that didn't fish, they fish now. And I think you just have an interest in it. And I was, I was uh, fortunate, my father kind of said, saw that happening. We went to some really cool places as a kid. We went to Canada, we went to the Keys, uh, we went all over the place, we bass fished and stuff. But I always knew, it's weird, I always knew I wanted to be a saltwater fishing guy. That's amazing. So that's like, I went to uh, I went to Ohio State, graduated with a degree in fre in freshwater management, but the whole time my dad was going, "What are you going to do when you get out of school?" I said, "Dad, I'm going to guide. I'm going to be a saltwater guide." He said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." So my senior year, last couple of months, he thinks I'm going to change my mind, and he never said, "What are you going to do?" He said, "Where are you going to guide?" Oh, he already so, knew. He said <laughs> he already knew. So. Uh, you know, I was I was really uh, fortunate um, to start here because, as you know, uh, it was there's not many places you can go where there's there's not that much competition, and I didn't really realize it then when I got started that there there wasn't the competition here between guides and fishermen. I was just appreciating where I was, and uh, like my buddy Rez Reed said, he said. He said, would you rather be a small fish in a big pond or a little fish in a big pond? He said, this is, this is a great, great place for you. you so know? you go, you go uh, Ohio State, it's in your genes, but I totally get that. I think we all do sitting here. What, uh, when did Hillnet come about, though? Because, like, oh, I mean, yeah. be a saltwater guy, you got keys. Back in the day, right. who's your, who are you seeing on TV at the time? Who's maybe anybody in Idaho? Oh, well, it's, it's interesting because I used to watch, there was a couple of, of shows on, national shows uh, that were on, um, you know, uh, that, that you'd watch on Saturday. They'd only be on Saturday and you'd hope they'd have a fishing Saturday. scene yeah. on there <laughs> instead of all hunting. Right. Hunting's good, <laughs> but I wanted to see the fishing. But uh, I really spent the most of my time in Nashville, Tennessee. And so I really grew up there fishing the TVA lakes and... Uh, and uh, really, uh, you know, got to watch some of those local guys on, on the TV there. It was a lot of fun. But, uh, but uh, the way I got started here, from Nashville, my folks came down here and uh, in, in the 60s, um, in the late 60s, started playing golf down here. I came down here when I graduated from college um, and worked, actually worked in high school down here and met the old guard, man, I'm telling you, I, I still remember these guys, they're, they're like etched in stone to me. You know, Captain George, Captain Gatch, uh, Bobby Broom, Doug Broom, a lot of names. Uh, there was already a system in here? There Was there charter boats? There, there, just... there were charter boats, but they were all offshore boats. Gotcha. Uh, there were a couple inshore boats out of South Beach, and Sea Pines had that program. Gotcha. They had some Makos in there fishing, but Captain George Cook kind of took me under his wing when I was working here one summer and um, and kind of gave me a start. George really kind of, you know, said, come on in here, man. I'm going to show you what's going on. And George is the guy that named me Fuzzy. Is he? Yeah, I had that in, uh, you know, late late in high school. This is a great question. And, uh, what is it? Yeah, well, Why is it? Yeah, well, you got to see it, man. <laughs> you got to see it. I had the fro going. Oh, you did know, you? Child of the, you know, child of the 60s. And I had a, I had an afro bigger than Jimi Hendrix there for a while. So. No but uh, 
I had that hair, and and uh, George, George saw me when he first met me. He'd see me down the dock. He didn't. He couldn't remember names or anything. He'd go, "Hey, Fuzzy, get over here." You know, he just so I I knew he was talking to me, so I'd come, and then hit all of his cronies. Uh, I mean, they, these guys were so funny, um, you know, just some, some great people. They'd say, George, what's that kid that's working for you? And he goes, I don't know, man. I don't know his name. Just call him Fuzzy. And that's how the whole Story thing life. started. That's it. That's it. And then it's funny because when, we, when Kim and I got married, the minister came. I'd known him for like seven years, you know, and came up to me right before the wedding. And he goes, <laughs> he was ready to start. He goes, I don't know your real name. And I can't tell anybody. My, no, my, don't my say mother, it. my <laughs> mother is the only one. That was anything. But anyhow, I told him, and he goes, "No, you're fuzzy, you're fuzzy." So he's, I mean, in the wedding, he said, "You know, oh, yeah, I be fuzzy." You know, it was just uh, that's awesome. It was funny, man. What about the guys? Like the guys back then, George Cook and the names you yeah. name, and what was the difference between the we'll call them, I guess, the old guard versus what you see nowadays? Uh, that's a good question because in the, in the old days, I know technology and all that yeah, stuff too, but, but just personality wise, the, I guess. The I'm old saying. days was all about now. now Buddy Hester um, was probably the first captain down here, uh, and and Buddy really paved the way for a lot of people, uh, and uh, he really had an, an incredible reputation for blue water, for bottom fishing, and that kind of thing. But when it started here on Hilton Head, really with you know, Harbor Town and all the other marinas, the emphasis was on like a four hour trip and it was mainly trolling for Spanish mackerel. Used to be acres and acres of Spanish mackerel out there. You'd round the corner at South Beach and you'd be into Spanish and you'd go five miles out and you'd still be into Spanish. And it wasn't it wasn't uncommon to catch coolers full of Spanish. Was it true that, that Mai Mai wasn't that far off either? Well or was that just yeah. Waves of fishery that yeah. went in and out. Basically, it, it was kind of it was kind of that. But the the mainstay really was uh, with the Spanish, the small blues, that kind of stuff because they could do a you know a four hour trip and just not go that far off. So really, that was the that was the that was really the the uh, bread and butter for most Hilton Head fishermen. And so they were they were making a living doing that. People loved it. They were catching a lot of fish. They were getting taking some home. dinner and stuff yeah, yeah. and then um, it didn't really change um, it, like I said South Beach Sea Pines fishing program had some inshore boats Captain Miles Altman oh, yeah. was one of those captains on, legend on yeah. those on those boats and uh, we used to get in some trouble back then <laughs> and uh, yeah. but but that's that was the first kind of inshore boat and then when I got out of um, college I was really George took me trout fishing one day. Captain George took me trout fishing, and we caught some trout. He showed me how to do it with the slip corks and everything. We were sitting along the marsh, caught him, and it was so much fun. And I looked at him and I said, George, why do we why don't we do this instead of taking people out there? And he goes, he goes, Fuzzy, this is what we do. Oh, keep it for yourself. You man. know, this is what we do. This is our stuff. You know, but I was like, I was really right then I was like this is where it's happening so that's that's where I wanted to land you know which is uh, and the back country is totally different we know mm -hmm. we know that but there's a trip for everybody yeah. how about how about the personality of the old time where they um, you know we've got uh, I've worked for captains or been yeah. with captains a little gruff or okay. always laughing or was there something that stood out to you back in the day I mean because you had a smaller community back then nothing anything like we have right yeah. now as far as people so where was the hangout well it was I tell you what back then it was like you had to know somebody to get in somewhere I mean really it was more more clickish more of a captain's fraternity gotcha back then but all a bunch of great guys a lot of them older um, you know uh, they just uh, you know developed this rapport and um, there weren't any really young were young captains back then and they started to come in but yeah they were some of them were a little gruffy back then. <laughs> you know they had, they were already had their their opinions and everything they weren't they weren't afraid to voice them uh but they were old old salty guys yeah you know? just the old I guard mean, yeah. i believe it man it's like intimidating to go in i remember as a kid being yeah. like oh these guys like i'm afraid to ask and then once you started 
get a little bit. They're exactly. Very, very accepting. Yeah, yeah they were. Yeah. Don't ask the old guy the question, but he's like, oh, this is how I do it, you know? Yeah. And there's not too many, I mean, there's not too many industries either where, you know, you, uh, I don't know, it just seems like the, the captains around Illnet mm-hmm. are kind of celebrities. You know, you've been out, your family's been out with, uh, I just had a gentleman I was fishing with. First trip you ever took was with you. So I mean, did we catch anything? He said he did pretty good that day. I've always so. asked that question. I'm always afraid to answer. <laughs> was it good? So going back, Thomas told us the other day was one of the best fish he ever had was a tarpon he didn't expect to catch. Mm-hmm. What was the oh, best yeah. catch you had when you first got here, and something that just totally blew your mind when you first started? Well, I tell you what, I I think um, the the first big huge fish that I caught when I was down here when I started fishing was a huge cobia. I mean, just a gigantic cobia. And that was like, that was a real eye opener. And I realized right then I was under gun. <laughs> and needed some bigger, bigger rods. Is that the we, fly story? Uh, th- that's not the fly oh, story. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. That too. was a good one, yeah. But, um, you know, and, and I tell you, really, when we started um, opening the, uh, the book on the tarpon, the whole tarpon thing, that was a really, amazing you know thing that came about i didn't nobody expected to catch them and then all of a sudden we were catching them kind of did did the school did the homework on that and and, and figured that whole thing out what'd you do just all of a sudden start seeing them while you're out there i mean you guys weren't really well i tell you what you're seeing them just yeah that's a that's a good question it's kind of like it's kind of like what captain chip's done with the great whites yeah you know he kind of listened to people kind of studied it heard something and investigated it yep it's that same thing it the was time the on it. Yep. yeah yeah so I, I always wanted to to try to catch them and I mean I went to Florida four times to fish for them before I ever even saw one here I didn't know they were nobody knew they were here so Stratty Captain Stratty used to be trolling around what's called what, what the outer bar which is about three miles off the beach there at Hilton Head and he'd call me and because he, he knew I had an affliction, I wanted to catch one, <laughs> yeah. you know. And uh, and Stratty was really good about sharing information like that. And he said, "Man, I'm seeing them. They're in these sloughs. They're up on the bars and stuff like that on the high water." So I went out there, and uh, it's funny because I told all my old clients that I've been taking fishing for years. I said, "Well, this summer we're just tarpon fishing," and they said, "Well, wait a minute. You never caught one, have you?" I said, no. When you say when you say your old clients, like what year is this now? Well, this because I mean, you've been you've been guiding here for what now? 45? Four, yeah, you're 40, 31 yeah. years old, but 40, yeah, 40, you know, uh, you've been 40, here for, 42, 42, 43 years. Okay, so these were the best clients you already had? Well, yeah, they were some clients that I had early when I gotcha. started. They used to fish with me all the time. I said, listen, we're not trout fishing anymore, not red fishing <laughs> anymore. We're tarpon fishing. Well, you never caught one. I know I've never yeah, but you <laughs> you could be the first, right. okay? You know, right? So, so I remember I was going out, going out, and Stratty saw some a couple days before. So I'd been out all morning looking, and I was coming back in towards South Beach um, over what's called the T hole now, yeah. and and I saw what appeared to be a big, huge raft of marsh grass, but when I slowed down. It was all tarpon fins. Oh, jeez. I mean, uh, this raft. And it was all these tail fins and, and all these uh, dorsal fins, and they were just rolling. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is your time. <laughs> oh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's, so, in, your, it's <laughs> in front of you. Yeah, Let's yeah. do this thing. I, again, I, I took a BB gun to a gunfight, okay? Right. <laughs> and I had a croaker in the box, and I flipped it on the hook real quick and I cast it out and I gave it to this young man that was with us and all of a sudden that thing came flying out of the water. I was like, oh my God, it's a tarpon. We're, we got him. You know, so we chased that fish all the way from the tee hole past Harbor Town. Oh, jeez. Oh, that way. Yeah. The tide was coming in real hard. Oh, gosh. So the tide was carrying us. I didn't have, like I said, I was under gun. Yeah. And um, had a real light tip rod. And I didn't want to break him off. And uh, and we finally got that thing in, man. That was unbelievable. That feeling. So, yeah. So, you know, so you take that, you take where those fish are, and then you can take that as a blueprint and start laying it over different places out there that have the same physical characteristics. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and, and then, lo and behold, we started to 
we started to discover. You know, it's like you and I went out that uh, couple of years ago, and we were trying to find that that spot that I'd seen him on. Green Anchor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not a secret, but <laughs> yeah, it's not a secret. <laughs> Anyhow, so it, it's been it's been an interesting journey in that respect. So I don't yeah. I don't. It sounds like you haven't, and we have fished together, which has always mm -hmm. been an honor to be with you. And that day. It's not a lot of where we as uh, captains have a certain amount of time like that day. We're out there. We're just feeling it out. Yeah. Have you always been that way? Like just yeah. let's go out yes. there and see what the ocean is going to give us today. And then we'll put the puzzle or you know, some of us have four hours. We've got to get to a shark hole and catch a fish or whatnot. Yeah, but it's, you, you have more of a it's let's a go little see bit what's of, going on out it's there. A, and it, it, it depends on the clients. But if I don't have a client... Yeah, I'm just totally. Let's. I don't want to fish any place I've fished before, and we're gonna go look for something else. Try something new. Look for because to me, that's the whole magic. That's what we do. We discover stuff. Yeah. And really, it's not uh, the the joy that comes out of guiding is not going to somebody else's spot and catching fish. Right. It's when you find the pot of gold or pot of silver. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know? And and that's really where that reinforces. You know. The exploration and what you're doing and the gratification and all that kind of stuff. That's in the gene. I think that's yeah, the, gene in the gene you're talking about. You're you're a sci you're not technically a yeah. scientist or a biologist, but yeah. if you're in this business, you're learning something every single yeah. day. Hopefully, yeah. or you're not going to want to do it. Yeah, well, you guys feel good. You you go out and fish, and when you find a new spot, oh, it's you're, like, yeah, you're like, I was telling somebody yesterday that half this stuff, half the cool stuff I catch is by accident. Oh yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, right. that, I had no idea because you, you're not yeah. doing something stupid. You're just trying something sure. new, and you're like, oh, I never knew that was gonna. Yeah, you you, you you got you got a you know, we found a couple. You found a really good spot, little creek mouth in the Broad River by the bridge there. Yeah, and we uh, and you found that that was pretty cool. And because uh, two local guys, and you got yeah. that's the other thing I was, we were talking about that yesterday too. Is uh, stop looking at all the big. Fancy three hundred thousand dollar boat. Yeah. Look at the guy that's in the John yeah, boat that's with right, the beard yeah. and the camos. That's right. And he's got the big, you know, trout cork on. Yeah. And that yeah. a couple gentlemen came by. We were fishing. We were fishing for tarpon that day. Yeah. And, let, and they just said, "Hey, have you seen all these tarpon up this creek?" And you're like, "What?" And you're like, "Oh, so." Yeah. I'm sure the crabber. The one thing I would love to do someday probably is do. I. It's an extremely hard business. Is the crabbing. Yeah. Or even the oystering. I know that's even more extreme. But those uh, yeah, those right, people yeah. must know. Nooks and crannies. Oh yeah, they do. You've yeah. never seen yeah. before, basically. Yeah. And uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas is a he's he's a dang bird hunter, man. I mean, snoop. He snoops down. He sniffs these redfish sure, out. Yeah, yeah. He's a whisperer. Yeah, he's, I'm, he's hot. I'm, hey, he he got me onto some fish uh, last uh, spring, yeah. and uh, the and, one and only time. Yeah, no. So I was like, I hadn't been fishing in like a, three weeks or something like that, and I had this trip. I said, Thomas. What do, you, what do you think? He goes, go here, blah, 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 get in this depth. And I was like, I never, I never usually do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I was kind of desperate, you know? <laughs> so I, I leaned on him. I called him like 15 minutes later. So Man, got him on, baby. You know? So what is so, it like for you? Pretty I, cool. I know you've gotten to know Fuzzy, but I mean, you're even, as you're growing up, are you not hearing his name? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what was it like to have somebody like that call you for information? It was pretty awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. funny because like, Talking about asking, like, you don't want to go somewhere else's spot. Yeah. We talked to him last year. I'm like, oh, was it this spot, this spot? And, you know, we're always referring to spots by name. Yeah. And I just know that's the name that so-and-so told me it was. And he said, oh, I named that. Oh, I named that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the backstories, you know. Yeah. So now it's kind of cool. It's like, oh, this is called this because. So it's kind of hey, cool. Yeah. It's like it's like everybody fishes the Mona out right. there in Port Royal Sound. It's how much that. So Mona, uh, you know, got, got its name from... Uh, uh, a, a, a wonderful uh, lady that is a is a trainer. She's a weight trainer and all that kind of stuff. She's strong as an ox, right? And we took her fishing one day out there, and uh, and her legendary husband. Yes, her legendary <laughs> husband. And uh, we had a we had a great team on there, and uh, she ended up catching like six tarpon that day. Gosh. And it was one of the first times we ever kind of focused, finally focused on that one little spot. You know, we've been looking all around, and all of a sudden that thing, you know, came to life that day. So we said, well, what are we going to name this spot? We're going to name it Mona. <laughs> so after Mona, you know? So a spot like that back in the day, uh, if you don't know, it's pretty uh, pretty well known. 
and there's a bunch of live bottom on it. How yeah. did you guys discover that? Well, Trial and error, like a rock come up? or Well, just... you know, that that's, that's a good question. So sometimes we just, you know, and I fished with Frank Fowler for 30 years. Another legend. And Frank, Frank's whole focus was on tarp. He didn't care anything about uh, any other fish. Uh, so he, we spent, we fished twice a week, sometimes three times a week together. And then we would, um, he, he was a real good, you know, student of the thing. We'd just spend time looking. You know, we might just cut the engines off and just look and drift and look and drift. So we kept, we kept noticing that the fish that we were seeing on the incoming tide and the outgoing tide seemed to kind of just stop in this one spot. And we kind of, we kept kind of ending up around that spot. So we kind of noticed some of the characteristics after a while. The rocks and the tide lines. Did you have machines back then, though? You yeah, yeah, we had stuff? machines. I got you. No, we just had a rock with a string tied to it. <laughs> oh, you know, something. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks like hard bottom down there. Yeah, not that old. Man. I know you're. I'm sorry. But anyhow, yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. Well. from paper yeah. to cement, yeah. right? Mark six. But uh, you go yeah. home and read the remember the yeah. paper graphs. Yeah. You're like, oh, there was a mark. There. That's right. <laughs> so anyhow, that's how we kind of, you know came across all those spots and while we would be on those we would look for other spots we weren't always going to that spot we'd go to other spots and try to find you know places out. so i'm going to go back and forth here so even now and today so if people don't know what tarpon are yeah please look it up it's it's a violent magical religious fish yeah. once you say that it's just, once it gets in your blood it's that's all you can think it's about the top this. it's the top probably the top three or four game fish in the world. And they're amazing and yeah. they're strong. So what have you seen, uh, so when you and Frank or all these years that you haven't, is there a pattern or does it change, is it change constantly? There's a pattern or like weather changes at tides? Like would you say after all these years that you, could you just dial in and know they're going to be in a certain spot? Well that's, that's a good question too because I think when you start to think that you know everything right. and you get blown away. Why, yeah. why plane? Yeah, why if you, if you, you think you know it, everything changes, okay? Um, one thing that I have noticed over the years is that there are certain winds, and it's not, it's not etched in stone, but your percentages go down. Northeast is one of them. And, uh, and northeast happens to be a pretty decent red, a redfish wind, you mm -hmm. know? And it's pushes it's that good. water in. Yeah. But, but the, uh, a, a northeast on, a, on, a, uh, on tarp, and, and they're real susceptible to barometer changes. So usually a northeast wind means there's going to be a weather change. Right. You know? Um, and what's that do? Does it, everybody, it's just their system. It's their pressure yeah, on their body, right? They just, they're just not happy then. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I've learned so much stuff from other guides tarpon fishing. Um, uh, Roger Burge is a great fisherman. He's not fishing anymore. He's down in South Georgia. Uh, and uh, Frank and I booked a couple trips with Roger. And Roger said, you know, uh, well, we got to go on the on the day of the full moon. And most of the time, you know. I don't like full moon usually. Cause yeah, there you go. They eat all night maybe or just. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it is, but a lot of water moving. Yeah, and just sunlight. I mean, it's not sunlight, but moonlight. So I got down there, started fishing with Roger, saw what he was seeing, totally flipped. You know, I'm like, okay, we're fishing the full moon. <laughs> and now, and, and then I told him a couple of things that he tried that worked too. And and he was, Roger was, uh, he's from uh, the Gulf Coast of Florida, you know, Boca, Boca Grande mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, and using a lot of plastics on the tarpon. And, and, you know, I had limited success with artificials. We did catch some on the fly, but but uh, limited success with plastics or crankbaits. And... Um, he was dialed in on a, a, a couple of little, uh, you know, four-inch little soft plastics. And he developed... Like a redfish bait, basically? Yeah, well... Like a little, uh, little thicker, basically? Yeah. Like, it, it, like a bucktail? Well, not a bucktail, just a soft plastic. Uh-huh. You know, like a big Z-Man bait yeah. with a heavier eye. Well, he, he throws a couple of different ones. But, um, you know, the first time we fished with him down there, it was like, oh, oh man, guys, this is great. Cast it out, and he said, don't want it. And we're, we're seeing fish, but he's, he said, don't whine. Just let it get down slowly and slowly start to bring it in. And that's when, this, that's when the bite happens. So normally, you see tarp and you think these sudden. things are huge. Yeah, and yeah. You're cranking it yeah. in. And, uh, and lo and behold, it's like fishing for a bass in a pond oh, with a plastic yeah, worm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like bottom. that. Yeah, it's like that. So anyhow, my point is, 
when you fish and you fish, you know, other places with other people, even though, you know, um, I'm a seasoned citizen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still learning stuff. Right. You're not you, you can't stop learning. Mm -hmm. I learned, I mean, all the time, you know, about. And you're not afraid to ask other people no. either. I think that's a big, some, some people in the world, they do, they get in their own head and think they know everything and they, and you've got blinders on and it does take yeah. a lot to sometimes ask questions yeah. but man if you stop learning and i'm learning from the young guys yeah. i mean you have to these guys are sharp oh these guys they've got sharp they got yeah. a bunch of stuff yeah. going on so uh, it's pretty awesome if you ever think you got it going on sign up for a tournament these guys will come in from out of town and spank you yeah. Out of town. <laughs> yeah i fished that one out of beaufort these guys are all oh, from north carolina all that i'm like shh Dude, I don't even think I went to the weigh-in. <laughs> got trashed. They all just left. Oh, yeah. just left yeah. I don't even know how that happens. You know, so. Yeah, it's it's humbling. It is. It's, it is humbling. It feels good. But anyhow, I, I didn't mean to. No, I mean it's that. it's fantastic. I mean that's uh, you're known for the first person to ever catch a tarpon on a fly here. Is that correct? Mm, yeah. And yeah. so what what was. That's what. I, that's the first story I ever heard about you. Actually, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing." Okay, well, I know I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to toot my own horn. Toot it. But you know, and then we caught the state record on conventional tackle. Oh. So we caught. I took. This is a funny story. So I took uh, Frank Fowler. You know, was my best client. Had a cancellation. I called Frank. I said, "You want to go? There's some fish out there." And he said, "He said, yeah, but he said, stop by." Steve Kaiser's dock on Spanish Wells and pick him up because he's never caught a tarpon. So we got out there by the tee hole, by the bar. We started seeing some big fish. I mean, these were some big fish rolling. Put the baits out. Rod goes down. Said, Steve, you take it. It's, it's your first fish. And when it jumped, it was like wow. it kept coming out of the water. <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, you know, this is a big fish. So we chased that thing down, and, and when it came up, I said, I, I didn't even hesitate. I said, that's a state record. You know, I said, I've, we got to, and you know, it's what a What was it back then? No, one, state record was, uh, one, no, it was 145, Oh, I think. it's a monster. Okay. So, uh, which isn't a tremendously big fish. It's carbon, a big but it's animal a big, still. It's a yeah, big yeah. So anyhow, so. You know, I hated to do it, and we used to do it back in the day because nobody believed we were catching them, so we would gaff them and bring them in. But I didn't feel bad sticking that one. So, but the thing is, when I got it up to the side of the boat, and and Frank and Steve were up here, and I had two gaffs on the boat, I stuck it, and I I was like, uh oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm really way out of my weight class on this one, you know. Yeah. So I I, I could barely talk to him. I said, get the other gaff. I couldn't even talk, you know. I think so, like, two, yeah. as big as you, right? I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't even talk. And and so we, we finally got it in the boat, and I said, guys, we're gone. We didn't even wind in the rod, so we went into Palmetto Bay and weighed it. And um, it was like it was like a 155, Eesh. and uh, so that was, that. Was, so it was great. I mean, it was, it's Steve's first harpin. And, it was and he never, record. I don't think he's ever fished for him since. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How long did it take you to land that It fish? was about an hour. It was it? Yeah. yeah. It was about an hour. Just massive yeah. power and going. Yeah. Now going back to the fly. That's okay, the, the fly. So this is, this is an interesting story. Again, Frank, you know, he, he fishes a lot with Bob Trossett down in yeah. the Keys. Down in Bob's like the number one world record holder, you know, in the, in the world. He he's, has more world records than anybody else. Anyhow, I was fortunate enough to go down there with Frank and fish with him. And um, the guy's amazing. I mean, I'm like a sponge sitting there watching this guy and what he's rigging with and what he's doing and stuff like that. But he had, he, he, um, he uh, invented this little technique called the drift back. Okay, so what he does is he takes like a trash can full of bait, fish of some sort. And he's with the scissors, and it's it's very timing involved. So about every about every three seconds, he cuts a piece of the fish off, and then he lets that drift. And then he'll take a few fish and throw those out and let that drift. And so you got a line, you got a distinct line going. And then he'll throw if he's fishing conventional tackle for anything else. He catches tuna this way, uh, wahoo, um, king mackerel, everything. He'll throw the fly in there and just let it drift. 
So what you're doing is you're, you're they're in your line. You're starting a parade. They're 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 in <laughs> yeah. they're in your line, yeah. right? And, and you got them in a straight line. You got them in a straight the line. Boat. I got so you. So you keep that you keep those chunks in that line. The first time we did it with him, we went to a spot, and I mean I I'd seen a lot of fish up close on that, but we were sitting there fishing. We're looking out for the fish like that, and RT goes, "There's one." I said, where is it? Right, right there. there. <laughs> he was eating the chunks as they were coming out like of the boat. Pat like a pet. Like a pet. Yeah. So we dropped the chunk down. See, he doesn't put a live bait on there. He just puts another chunk on there. Oh. And just dropped it down because it's matched the hatch but kind of thing. That's what they're eating. Back. That's yeah. what they're eating. So the drift back's really cool. And, you know, that's basically how we caught the first one on the fly. We were chunking and we were throwing big sailfish streamers out, but it was muddy water. So the profile. Were you moving the? Were you no. moving the fly? Just kind of keep it in that parade, basically. Let it drift, and yeah. right, right at the end of the drift, right at the end, where it comes tight. Yeah. Do about three strips, just in case there's one down at the end. It sees it, and then starts to come forward. Yeah. On it, and then and then start a couple strips, like that, and then. But we hooked the one, the the first one one day, and then we had like five shots the next day. When you mm -hmm. hooked the first one was. I know you're expecting it, yeah. but you're not expecting it. Is there a point you're like, oh my god? Yeah, no. We actually yeah, are yeah, doing this and this thing yeah. happening. Oh, you know, it is. It's, yeah, it's like surreal. Yeah, and you it, know, in the cloudy water or like the green. No, you... it was fa fairly cloudy. Really, and it, then just yeah. comes up and just nails it. If they're in there, if they're in the wall, if they're in that area, now we'll say this: the fish that we've hooked, some of them we've hooked in in really shallow water. But I took Billy Schilling out fishing one time, and and uh, I said, Billy, we're gonna um, we're gonna try the drift back, and uh, for the tarpon, and we were catching kings in this one spot too. So Billy, who's an accomplished blue water fisherman, you know, he's he's since passed, but he was one of my best friends, and uh, we were out there fishing. And he's got the fly rod. I'm sitting up on the bow, kind of watching things, and all of a sudden the line comes tight. Billy never held a fly rod in his life. He goes. What do I do? And I said, just hold on, Bo. You know, and he's he's holding on, and, and we that we got we jumped the tarp, and he had a big kingfish on, all in like the, the span of about oh, wow. two hours. Some drag. And board he there. was like, I've never seen anything like that. But but here I learned that from RT. Frank took me down there, learned that it's it's all part of the. Seems like everything. Ears open. It seems like everything starts in Florida too, like. Somebody, yeah, there's a lot of new techniques that come out of Florida. I'm not saying all of them, yeah, but if you go down there, you're gonna learn something from those guys because yeah. they're fighting clear water and a little different, stuff, sure, you know. But anyway, sure. let's uh go ahead. Let me ask you something because yeah. I, I see it myself with any fish talking about not catching any, a tarpon for you know, oh, I've never caught one. This is the year when you got yeah. one. Did you when did it click where you're putting up like numbers and stuff? Like oh, how long was that from first one to like I'm yeah. good at tarpon fishing? I I think it was I think it was when we took that first spot at the T hole, and then we moved around a little bit in that area, and found a couple of other spots. But then the weather would get bad where we couldn't fish that. We mm -hmm. started looking for other spots, and, uh, uh, and and it wasn't until we started looking for those other spots that we actually started to accumulate mm -hmm. releases. You know. And then, um, you know, when then we were catching, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, 60, a couple of years. And were you releasing them right away? Yeah. I know you had to gaff the one, but did you guys have a mindset where... Yeah, you know, we were. Or was it coming around at that point, like, well, hey, we need to release yeah, these things now? That's a good, that's a good point. The first couple of years we started catching them, it was like we'd come in and, we, and we'd say, no, we caught a couple of tarpon out there, and they go... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, there was no cell phone cameras. Right. You know, and there was no, you'd take a picture, but you wouldn't get it back for, you know, a week and a half. And um, so actually back in the day, we were actually killing a couple just and, you know, and, and uh, just to show. Just to sh and then finally we started releasing everything. This was a long time ago, though. That was back in the 80s and stuff. We were doing that. So, uh, and, then, and then we rounded the corner on that. We just don't do that anymore, of course. Yeah. Because uh, those fish are, those bigger fish are 40, 50, 55 years yeah, old. I've heard some of them almost 80 years old. Some I, th of them. I yeah, think. They, they, yeah. And that's a generational thing. And we're, mm -hmm. if you ever go back to the, the history of tarpon, it starts down in Florida in the 1800s. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. And they were 
the harvesting. Yeah. I don't know how many they did, but there there's older fish now. Yeah. So, I mean, but yeah, for there's, sure. There's a great book. Uh, it, it's by a, a man named Demick, and it's it's. Uh, this is like an amazing book. Actually, again, Frank got me this book. But these guys, it was he and his brother, they were fishing in Boca Grande Pass back in the 1800s. Nobody was there. They were fishing out of a canoe. That's like oh, a rowboat, is it right? Yeah. They were no, fishing out of a canoe. Oh, gosh. And they had a tripod <laughs> with an old-time camera, you know, like the thing you throw yeah. The, yeah. the back over yeah, so they the could big, get the, the big ball yeah. and stuff. Yeah. They had the, they had a, his brother was in the, back of the canoe taking these photographs of these tarpon. The pictures are amazing. And Monster you, spectrum? Uh, yeah, I mean, and they're catching them out of these canoes. There's nobody around. There's nobody around for 300 miles. And uh, if, if you know about Boca Grand Pass, you know there's tarpon there, and there's big sharks there, too. But they flip the canoe over numerous times. Oh, God, with those big hammers in there? <laughs> yeah. Too? yeah. But it's it's an amazing book, and uh, it's, it's called The Tarpon Book. It's and called the Tarpon Book. It's from, yeah. it's from the. It's, you could probably find it uh, on eBay or Amazon, but it's 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 one of the most classic uh, tarpon uh, books I've ever seen. We'll put it in the description in this video. On yeah, YouTube, so people awesome. can check it out. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah. Let me switch gears out because there's yeah. a lot, and I love all the tarpon stuff. That's yeah. all we could talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, we got to get out. I want to go get stuck let, on that. We'll go back and forth here. Let's go back to when you first started. Mm -hmm. um, you're a single fuzzy. Yeah. And you said you got married. How'd you meet Kim? And how'd that all? How'd you start a family here with what you're oh, doing and stuff? Oh, so Kim, this is a it's a fishing story again, of course. Yeah, of course it is. So I was I was uh, down on the dock at Palmetto Bay. I had a little shop down there, Fuzzy's Bait and Tackle, back in the day, you know. And uh, and we used to sell the main thing. Are we gonna get those T-shirts? Can we get the uh, T-shirts? We might have to get it. Right, I would yeah. love to have one of those yeah. T-shirts. Rock it. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, I will see if Paul can sell us some for us here at Southern Draw. No, it's here. <laughs> but but uh, so the number one thing we sold there was frozen candy bars. You know, that was how <laughs> important tackle was to everybody. <laughs> Had all these kids coming down buying frozen uh, candy bars. But uh, um, you know, I was talking about meeting meeting Kim. I was walking down the dock, and and our and our good buddy Colin's daddy was down there. And he fished with my uh, what what became my uh, father-in-law, John oh, wow. Yost. Wow! So he fished with John all the time. Well, Colin's down there cutting fish up and filleting fish, and I saw this really pretty and attractive <laughs> girl walking up to talk to Collins, and I said, "You know her?" And then he goes, "Yeah, that's Kim. That's John's daughter." And I said, "Really?" He said, "I'll introduce you guys." And then he said, "He because because." Uh, they, they lost their writer. I think it was Miles was writing for Island Events then, magazine, a fishing article. And, and, and uh, Collins goes, Kim, you ought to get Fuzzy to write the article. So Kim interviewed me. Oh. So he, he said, okay, he's literate. Maybe he can write this thing. <laughs> you know, I had all my teeth, you know. And so <laughs> so uh, anyhow, so uh, I started writing the Island Events article, and that's how we met. And then uh, so... It's fantastic. So she, uh, she is, she's really been a, just incredible and so supportive of, of everything I've done, and uh, and she just is an amazing person. And you've got so. two great kids. Yep, yeah, Drew, Captain Drew is a, is a guide, and uh, he's fun to hang out with. Any Thomas. Oh yeah. He and Thomas hunt together a lot too. So he's a good fisherman. Good, sure. good, good fisherman. Definitely learned from yeah, his dad. Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's, he's got the, uh, he's got the thing. And then Carrie, my daughter, is, is uh, with Textron. She manages the Easy Go uh, golf cart store there, and uh, and and uh, dating Captain Thomas here right now. So, <laughs> so uh, bringing it all into the yeah, family. Yeah, we're yeah, bringing it. Like it. Yeah, I said. She said, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out with this guy, Captain Thomas McDonald." I said. Oh, he's pretty good. He's got some good spots. <laughs> so That's be nice thing. to him. You know? <laughs> I got one story I want to tell tonight. Is uh, I did have the chance to fish with you and your son, which to me was iconic watching because Drew's an amazing fisherman and an amazing person too, just like his dad. Um, but we got a chance to go out fishing that day, and we were out there, and we were, I think we were on Drew's boat. That's right. And the rod went in the water. Do you remember? Oh, that? yeah. His <laughs> so, favorite rod. His so his favorite rod. And so I'm watching, you know, two guys, a ton of respect, but then the father-son aspect. Just got, yeah, and the rod went over. I think you, you hit it with your knee or something. And uh, yeah. He, it was his favorite rod. 
And sure enough, the whole boat just, and now we're in major current right yeah. on the rip at Joiner, basically. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, and they're going at it. Like, this is my favorite rod. Oh, and, buy you new one. No. And sure enough, <laughs> they get their rods out and they caught it back that day. Yeah. And uh, man, you guys were you guys were hooed out there on this part. Oh my god. He was he was devastated. That was by fun. That, rod that was stuff. fun having you, man. <laughs> and uh, but I tell you, yeah, I was like, I was like, when that rod went over, because he had just said, this is my favorite rod. <laughs> Kabush, and I was like, "Oh no!" You know, so that was like not good. You know, when did he uh, get? When did he get into? Because I mean, you know, some kids, uh, their fathers or their the adults in their lives, they yeah. can do. You know, they don't always follow what they yeah. do. Did he? Did he gravitate you? I mean, right away. As a yeah, kid? He, he he really did. But I think what was really cool when he was going to middle school and stuff. He, yeah, he had some buddies that liked to fish, or he'd teach them to fish. And they'd take off on their bikes and they'd hit all these ponds, you know, around here and catch these great saltwater fish. Yeah. And then he got really uh, addicted to it. And then when he was still in, in uh, a senior in high school at, at Hilton Head Christian, he got his captain's license. The so, age. you know, I said, wow, well, you can skip school a little bit, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. So, uh, you know, but he, that's when he got his, his license and he's, he's really developed his own unique things. I think it's interesting though when he and I go fishing together. And I don't know if you picked up on that. I did, yeah. So he, I'll make a suggestion. Yeah. And it's like nah. It's yeah. his boat. It's it's his boat. He's the captain. I go, That's good, Dad. But uh, I don't know. It's fun. And that was a good dynamic. Yeah. I did notice that because it's almost like I would have thought he, you guys would have been just in tune. Like, hey, let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. No, it was totally opposite. Yeah. One had one way to do it. Yeah. One had the other way to do it. And I was like, this is. Not yeah, what I let's expected. Go here. No, here. let's go here. But he's becoming, and you know, another. He's going to be a legend someday around here, around the island he's, too. He's, he's fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of him. And, yeah. he, and he, it seems like he does the same. He just picks up on stuff, and he yeah. also a great human being too, which I well, think you should be really. Proud well, of you too. know what I told him, and you guys are, you guys are full of the, as Captain Byron says, the aloha, right? <laughs> so, so you know what, you know what it is. And when Drew started fishing, I said, listen. It's, you can catch all the fish in the world. You can fish the boat up, you can fill the boat up with fish, but if you're not a, a, a nice person, a, you know, you're not congratulating people, you're not warm with them, you're not telling funny things, all that stuff, it, you're in entertainment business. Mm -hmm. right. You are in, in, in the, right. the, the curtain goes up and you're on. Right. You've got the people sitting right there. And, and you are amazing oh, at that. Yeah, thank you. I, I, can, that. I can see him out there. <laughs> And uh, I, it's it's so much fun. Everybody always says, "Who's that really nice guy?" <laughs> I said, "That's Captain John." <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can if you catch the smallest fish, he's gonna make you feel like a hero, a king. I, and uh, I appreciate that. That's, that's what, a great that's honor what, for you. To say so that to I me. mean, that's what that's what I love about you, man. I that's, think he's got that aura. Too, oh yeah, man. he does too. Oh, yeah, he, mine comes. Mine just comes from. I mean, I everything I've done, and I'm not. I owe it to my mom and dad. I've been fishing mm -hmm. with my dad since we skipped school a few times. We got caught one time in family watching a, a video catching salmon, and somebody said, hey, it's like, can't believe we're catching salmon on a Tuesday. And my mom's like, Tuesday? Weren't you supposed to be in school? <laughs> no. And my dad got busted because he didn't take me out. But I treat everybody, even in my daily life, just mm -hmm. like I would treat anybody in my family. Yeah. And I think everybody should do that. Yeah. And I think, I think you... Uh, you're the leader of that. I mean, I know the first time that you really, we were sitting on a dock and it was Travis and I down at Hillnet Harbor and you were getting gassed. Mm -hmm. And you've never not taken your time to explain something or to be interested. Mm -hmm. And you make people feel warm, which is pretty awesome. Where does that come from? And I, and I don't mean that because everybody should be like that, mm -hmm. but it seems like if anybody picked up the phone right now to call you, you'd be there for them. What, what's... Yeah. Through your folks, their faith. I know your faith is strong yeah. too. Your family's strong. What was your well, mindset with all yeah, that? Yeah, I think it's all that, and I think it's it's you know it's it's my wife, um, it's it's my faith. It's knowing that what I catch is not it's good, but it's not who I am all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's it's just what I do. But I'm always interested in people. I, I love asking people. Uh, you know where they're from what they do I'm just interested in that yeah. and I think too and you know this when you show an interest in somebody in what they do and their kids it just you're having a conversation the next time you see them your friends you're connected for life yeah you're connected for life yeah. so I think that's all a part of it don't think of yourself as 
I'm the charter boat captain. What I say goes. Hey, this is a this is a, a, a you know human being. They're they're fishing with you. Mm -hmm. You know they they want you to be nice to their kids. They want you to teach their kids, and and that's something I learned from uh, other other captains too along the way back in the early days too. Were they like that back then? Because I always figure yeah. old. I yeah. just figure guys with like eye patches and you know yeah. just big old you know. Fishing and stuff, but I guess they were teachers some, back then. Yeah, some of them were really gentle souls, you know, and yeah. some of them were hardcore. But th this is, this is a tell you a story about Captain George. George had a smoker going on the dock at, at his boat, and that smoker was going just about every day. <laughs> so, and you, you get off the boat, you come in from a charter, and you, you know, people might be in a, a rush or something like that, and George said, Grab yourself a plate, come on over, you got to taste this smoke cobia. You know, and people were like, really? You know, you're going to, yeah. you know, so he had that, he had that going on, you know, and, uh, and so you got to extend that. that. That's a special thing. So you know? right off the bat, while you're a charitable captain, when you're first starting, mm -hmm. are you doing that? Or are you did, like everybody else, or I'm a captain? Did you develop yeah. into that? Or were you always like that? I guess, you know, I think Cause we've all started yeah. like, oh, it's my boat. Not my yeah, boat, but I know what you, mean. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're trying to control the situation. Then you learn to. Let I think I got more comfortable with it, mm -hmm. you know, and learned that it's not it's not about me. Right. It's about them. Yep. You know, and it's about him. Yep. You know. Absolutely. So so I, I think that's you know that's that's the most important thing is uh, uh, you know show what you have on the inside. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, well, it sounds like you've always been like a stand up guy. I'm just sitting here thinking of a story you told me. You, you mentioned Byron being like Aloha. Byron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about always being there for somebody. Tell me how you met Byron. Oh, yeah. So Byron. you know Byron. Because Byron's a yeah. legend, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're going to get him yeah. in here, this too. Good. He's amazing. coming in here for sure. Yeah. He's amazing. He's, and he's developed a, a, an incredible business now, too. I mean, mm -hmm. it's taken a little bit, but he's an amazing he needs a He needs to do a movie called On the Road with Byron. <laughs> he's been everywhere in the world. Yeah. And he's fished everywhere. He's surfed Great everywhere. Surfer. He's, like, unbelievable. So when, when I was living on North Forest Beach when I was single back in the day, I walked down to the beach to, to see the, uh, you know, what the surf was doing and stuff like that. And there was this little kid walking up the steps on North Forest Beach, and he's going, ooh, and he's, he's like bending over. He's like, my foot. And he looked down, his whole foot was like sand spurs. So I helped him pull all those sand spurs out of his foot. I didn't know who he was, you know. And then and Byron, I see Byron like 15 years later, and he goes, man, you don't remember this, but... I was down there fishing or doing something, and you helped me pull the sand spurs out of my foot. Isn't that awesome? I went, I went, awesome. Golly, you know? small, yeah, small world. Yeah, small world, you know. And also, I mean, to your credit, uh, small little guy on the island making a name for himself. Yeah. Chip Michael Love, that was, yeah. he was one of the first times he ever went fishing was, was with who? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I Chip. mean, he went out with you, and he caught the bug, and now look where you're yeah. Your work yeah, is, basically. Here's a guy that caught has caught more great whites than anybody in the in the country. And he's he's knocking the you know he's knocking the numbers off, but he's tagging all his fish. It's amazing. I, it's just totally amazing what he's done. Amazing. You know? And he has just excelled. But uh, worldwide. Know, world, yeah. worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. Yeah. But you guys have too. I mean, you guys are are knocking it, knocking the you know knocking it down and uh, doing a great job. You got both of you all are great. Uh, you know, great ambassadors for Hilton Hilton Head Island. I mean, you guys exemplify everything that we should be as an industry okay we don't know everything we just want to be with you have a good time with you and catch some fish yeah you know what i mean yeah and so that's what it's about that's what makes hilton head fishing different i think i think so too it's you know? part of that family i mean you're you if you don't know that you're not you're going to be a part of that vacation one way or the other yeah now i just i mean i just had a trip not that long ago, it's raining, it's cold, it's miserable. And finally, we all looked at each other. We hadn't caught anything like, I think it's time to go in. And we all laughed at each other. And I looked right at him, I go, you'll never forget me. I mean, yeah, this, will, yeah. this will always, and go. we're talking about him now. So whether good or bad, you want to be on the good side. You are laying the foundation to these family memories mm -hmm. and traditions that are going to go on for a lifetime. And I've got a and couple bad. To, I've got a couple of bads, but... Uh, oh, yeah, everybody's got... You've got enough trips. You've got to think about it. This is funny. So I, I had this one family that fished with me every year, and they, 
came down to Palmetto Bay and they said, man, we've been fishing with you since the first, you know, month you started. And uh, they said, we didn't catch anything. Oh, we caught every stingray in Calabogie Sound. And I said, really? And, and you kept coming back and you <laughs> for punishment. Right. And, and they said, well, we figured if you stayed in this long enough, you were finally going to figure it out. Oh, I said, well, thank you. Well, thank you. You yeah. didn't believe them. You know, we've, so, all, yeah. we've all had those days out there for sure. Yeah. All right, so going now to uh, where we're kind of at right now, and I just want what is your – Let's start with just the captains that are around, and I know, where, where are we at? Are we in good shape on the island as ambassadors? Are we in good shape? Do we have too many captains, not enough captains? What, what's the, and the captains that you're seeing come up, and we're not going to mention any names because we got great captains. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. Um, but yeah. do, you, do you see a pretty healthy and a healthy future? Yeah, too? I do. I, I really do. And, and, and all the younger guys like Thomas. Yep. Uh, that, I, that I've met, there's some guys out of Beaufort and stuff like that, they're all really, you know, really nice people, and they all want to learn, they're all hitting it hard, they discover new stuff all the time, and, um, you know, that's that's been fun for me to, uh, to follow, and it's uh, been fun. All right, so, um, man, so incredible night so far, a lot of knowledge, uh, we're going to have you back, part two, fuzzy, there's just too much here. You got too much knowledge. First of all, from the bottom of my heart, and Thomas and Southern Draw, thank you for being here tonight. And uh, thank you, buddy. Thank gonna, you, part buddy. Part two is going to come out here very, very soon. Uh, we'll have this out probably in a week or so. I think we need to talk about uh, in the next episode coming up where our fishery is headed, some of the pressure yeah. of our fishery, and what we all need to do as captains and even the public, because we're here at Southern Draw, yeah. helping the public out. What we need to do to make our fishery as great as it's been for the last 50 years, right. if not longer. Right. So. Yeah, that's great. And continue these and, memories uh, for families and stuff. And thanks to Paul and Southern Draw thanks for, to Southern. for having so, us. Yeah. And this, sto this store is amazing. Yes. I mean, there's everything in here. It's not, and it's not that. It kind of goes on the same thing, and I know I'm going to plug because we're here. It uh, goes about what you were saying, too. You feel warm and welcome in here yeah. with your family. When you're it, here. Is. So, it is. So um, look spot. for this episode. It's going to be... Uh, Southern Draw Outfitters YouTube channel, Captain Fuzzy. <laughs> Brother, thanks. Man. Hey, all right, guys. I love you, and we're going to hey, see you back love you buddy. Soon. Love you, buddy. And what's your, hey, and what's always, what do you always end with? Tight lines to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right.